Well, well, well. You, you, everybody know what happens when the Redskins lose. Oh, my goodness. That, that makes for a bad week. It's like the wives ain't cooking because the husbands don't want to eat. <laughs> you didn't you didn't bet somebody on the game. You don't have the money to pay the bet back. Boom. I mean, it's, <laughs> man, it's, it's, it's amazing how um, – a sporting event can change your whole life. But truth be told, I um I mean I'm sorry, I'm a Redskins fan. I love the Redskins, but I didn't think we was gonna win because you know the Falcons have a high powered offense and then we have so many injuries. But anyway, I wanted to get that off my chest because <laughs> I'm still feeling a little certain way about it. But as long as Dallas lose on Monday, I'll be good. <laughs> so um today's show, I'm gonna get into we're gonna get right into it, man. Today's show, I wanna Got my good friend, President Larry Savoy, oh, my, my man in the building. I'm, I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about himself. Y'all know how I do. I don't like, you know, reading what my guests, their accomplishments and all that. I love for them to speak about themselves because they know what they accomplished. They know what they want the world to know. <laughs> you know, but um, I, I read on his, um, his bio and um, it's very impressive. And not so much uh, his bio that it impresses me. It's him itself, man. I um, I watch you, man. You know, and that's 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 my job because I'm a, what I call a kids advocate. You know, I love young men. I love young women. I love to see their growth. Um, I love to see them always flourishing. And um, since they put you in the building, man, it's you know it's been very phenomenal. Thank also, you. also seeing you saw you at a couple of other schools, man. I'm like, who's this dude, man? <laughs> this guy like he's like really putting it down, man. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So. So, but this this is a serious topic. The topic today is going to be about you know the expectations of our scholars, um, and for you for whom that don't know what scholars are, I'm, I'm not being funny because some people may not know. Just students, you know, whether it be elementary students, middle school, high schoolers, even college students, the expectations of them, and also what we fail to realize and we fail to talk about is the requirements of their parents and their guardians. A lot of our parents, you know, take for granted what their roles really are and what they're supposed to do. And then they blame it on somebody else hmm. when they're a lot of shortcomings. <laughs> All right? So He's without, speaking my language, man. On, man. <laughs> so without any further ado, um, Brother Larry, can you introduce yourself to my listeners? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Archie. I appreciate it. Uh, another Caroline uh, Amen. Uh, sitting next to you. Whoop, whoop. 85. Uh, <laughs> a little later, 93. But it's okay. I'm still a Caroline through and through. But uh, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be here. I uh, have my family with me. I just want to say hello to my wife and, uh, and my girls, uh, Bria, uh, Bria, Michaela, and uh, Kyla, as I call them affectionately, Stink. Uh, fats and uh, homie, yeah, uh -oh. well, those are my girls. But anyway, so as a as, as a parent, you know, um, I, I'm I'm the most proudest because I have three beautiful young ladies uh, that are out here in the world doing great things. I have a college graduate, high school student, and awesome. an elementary school student. But uh, a little bit about me: uh, from uh, I grew up in uh, Sea Pleasant, Maryland. I uh, grew up uh, in the public school system from uh, K through eight. Mm -hmm. um, once uh, had a uh, um, a mentor by the name of Father Joseph Del Vecchio, uh, Joseph Idle passed away last year, but uh, my main man, as I would say, uh, helped me get to Archbishop Carroll and uh, helped me uh, realize my potential, along with other great people. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, uh, growing up with my mom, uh, my mom, uh, I, I'm blessed to have two moms, uh, as, I, as I tell people, one's on the East Coast, one's on the West Coast. Okay. Uh, my mom, I hope she, uh, I hope she figured out her technology. My mom lives in Las Vegas. I can get to uh, Las Vegas. Uh, you know, so uh, and, uh, growing up with my mom and, and my brother, uh, who, who passed away uh, 2013, I'm sorry, 2003. Mm -hmm. About to give him, we'll give him some short time. My brother passed away, but my sister, who I know is listening, uh, we uh, grew up, like I said, at Central Gardens. Central Garden apartment, shout out to uh, my Central Garden brothers and sisters. Uh, 
But I grew up in a situation where, you know, education wasn't always the first and foremost. But, you know, I used to be upset with my mom because I didn't understand why she, you know, did things, let me do things or let me go the way that, that I was going. And, and not in a negative way, but just in a sense of giving me the opportunity to go out here and uh, be a young man mm -hmm. uh, and provide people around me, um, you know, people around me to uh, help show me how to be a young man. Um, you know, for me, learning how to be a, a father, learning how to be a, a, a responsible man came from other people, not my biological father, but uh, came from, you know, gentlemen like uh, Herbert Bullock, uh, who is uh, is my pop, as I say. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, again, my mom, uh, Juanita, is out there in Vegas and my mom out there on this side. Uh, so anyway, just really uh, had an opportunity to flourish when I got to Archbishop Carroll High School and and really wanted to figure out what I wanted to do. So I thought I wanted to be a theater major. Okay. I thought I wanted to be I a theater that. major. I thought right. I wanted to uh, be on stage, which I still do. I mean, right. you know, I, I try to act a little bit, but uh, just a little bit. But anyway, um, so anyway, just just really uh, um, never knew college was something that I wanted to do. Okay. That wasn't anything I heard until a gentleman by the name of Tim King. Shout out to Tim King out in uh, Chicago, Urban Prep founder. Uh, but Tim King, uh, who was a teacher at Carroll, first started out, gave me an opportunity to realize that college is a potential. You can do this if you wanted mm -hmm. to do it. Uh, so I had an opportunity to go to uh, Georgetown uh, summer program of, uh, right before my, my senior year. And that really gave me the opportunity to, to realize that uh, college, is a, um, college was, was real. So long story short, I ended up going to Temple University, played a little baseball there. Okay. Um, after I played baseball, I thought, uh, I wanted, again, like I said, I wanted to go to uh, be on somebody's stage. But at the end of the day, I started working at a place called St. Vincent's Children's Home in Philadelphia, which was a foster home for young people displaced 30 days, uh, 30 days, 90 days uh, from their families. And I ran a summer program, and I realized that I had more to give than just being in front of people performing. I wanted to help young people realize their potential, and that was an eye-opening experience for me. Mm -hmm. So um, that's when I decided that I wanted to go into the realm of education. Okay. Uh, when I told them that uh, I played baseball at Temple, and so when I told them that I wanted to change my major, they said, well, you change your major, you lose your credits, and you won't be able to uh, play ball. And I said, well, I don't want to do that. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. I said that, uh, you know, so we had to pick a concentration, so the concentration was education. Okay. So my, my concentration, my, my degree is bachelor's in uh, uh, BA in theater uh, with a concentration in uh, education. Okay. And then from there, got the phone call to come back to Carroll, directed the school plays. I was the attendance officer, mm -hmm. um, coached baseball, moved up. And uh, somebody said, uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Robert Agar said that uh, you need to go back and get your papers. You need to go back and get. You need to go back and get your degree. So I went to Trinity University, got my uh, master's, and uh, life just took off from there. Um, you know, became an administrator at Archbishop Carroll. Uh, as I said, I've, I've done every job at Carroll, other than principal, mm -hmm. ironically, ironically. Uh, okay. because when I uh, when I left Carroll, I was the uh, fourteen years. I was the uh, assistant principal for student life. Then the opportunity, I'm like, man, I want to be a principal. Mm -hmm. I want to be a principal. I want to. I want to move on. I want to grow. Best decision I ever made because I was able to go uh, to a school right down the street from here, St. Michael uh, the Archangel uh, Elementary School. I've heard it, yes, sir. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a great year. Uh, Catholic education, 22 years, and uh, this, this, is, this was a school that closed. And they're not opening Catholic schools. They're closing them. They're closing them, yeah. uh, So I was the last principal at uh, St. Michael and then, uh, unfortunately, closed. Great opportunity uh, to... Uh, be the principal at Don Bosco Cristo Rey, which is the other Archdiocese High School here. Uh, it was a great opportunity, and, and I have to say that's when I got my sea legs. Mm. Uh, six years uh, at uh, Don Bosco really taught me a lot, and it prepared me to be a principal. Uh, it prepared me to be a president. It prepared me to be uh, somebody that is the light for those who do not have a light. Mm. Uh, it, is, it, it, is, it prepared me to... Um, to be the person I am. I mean, because again, as I said, it's not about me anymore. It's about the young people that yeah, I serve. It's about my children. It's about my family. It's about really bringing everything to light. And so 
Um, I'm just blessed to be here, man. I'm blessed to be here. I'm excited. Uh, and, and thank you, Archie, for doing what you're doing. I mean, coach extraordinary. You should have been uh, JV champ, but we're not going to talk about that. Yeah, today. I'm still recovering from that. <laughs> we're not okay. going to talk about this. What's the street saying? Real recognize real. Absolutely. And that's why I allow, I allow my guests to, and, and we'll say, it, edify themselves because a lot of people are not edifying themselves, whether it be something small or something large. Um, that's also a tool that we need to teach our youngsters. Absolutely. To edify who you are at the stage of where you're at. Absolutely. If you if you if you start edifying yourself, you're like, oh wow, that's all I have to say about myself. Guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna encourage our youth to do more. Absolutely. So I'm always erring on the side of the listener. I yes. will for the rest of my life, I will always be a listener because my listening will encourage other people to grow. Absolutely. And, and, and what I always say is that I'm always learning. I love to find that person, male or female, older than me that I can just sit back and listen because I try to learn something every day. I try to learn something from, as my brother-in-law Danny Boone says, wisdom. Wisdom. You know, and I and I love it, man. We, I love it. We've growing up in Southeast Washington D.C. My my role models was the guy selling weed, the guy that that was drinking a lot, the guy that was a womanizer, the guy that. Was robbing you all everything that people frown upon were my mentors, right. and what I learned from them was they respected the fact that no matter what they were doing, they right. still gave me enough knowledge and wisdom so that I wouldn't do the same thing. Absolutely, and, and I'm the same way. I mean, because again, you know, you you know, I look at uh, you know the the, the largest uh, crack house in uh, in my area, and knowing the people that come in and out, knowing the people yeah, who running it, and all that stuff. But the one thing that, that always, and I don't know if it's me or whatever the case is, everybody always kept me away from that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's not what you need to be doing. That's not, you know, nah, nah, go to school, you know, mm -hmm. play ball, you know, uh, uh, get involved in the church. You know, my grandma was very uh, strong in that, making sure that we go to church. You know, we used to walk to church. Right. You know, I mean, my mother wasn't going, she didn't get in the cars, you know, hey, we going to church. Going so to church. We, we walked on down to the church because there were things going on, the teen club and things of that nature. So... All this stuff was happening around me, but that wasn't what I was about. That wasn't what people allowed me to be. Mm -hmm. And actually, I thank God for my mom for putting people in my life. I didn't understand it then, but having people in my life to help and support me along the way helped me learn to truly be a young man. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, that's, that's, you know, when you look at it, hindsight being what it is, but I mean, my mother's a genius. I mean, because she put me in situations that... Uh, that allowed me to, to, to not save me from things, but allowed me to make mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, allowed me to grow, and allowed me to own my, my successes and my failures. And I think that's where we're missing a lot in today's education, in today's world, is that we got a lot of parents trying to save. Uh, we got a lot of parents out here trying to, um, you know, stop their children from falling. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 my kids will tell you, I let them fall. I pick them up. I let mine fall. And I join on them and laugh. Oh, why we join all day long? Yeah. You know what I mean? Did but you really uh, just do that? I, yeah, absolutely. Because you know they have to. It, it irritates me because you know parents forget what it was like to be 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds. They forget the mistakes that they're made. And then when their kid does something, it's like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. No, it's not. You laugh about it in the room with the closed door, but in front of them, you let them know that okay, now what? Yeah, but it, and also like they're still doing the same thing that the fourteen year olds were doing. Absolutely. So that's what and that's that's the that's what the disconnect is. The disconnect is when your child does something that you don't appreciate, it's showing who you really are. Absolutely. And a lot of a lot of guardians and a lot of parents need to remove themselves from their kids and actually look at the child that their kid is becoming. Absolutely. And help mold that kid. Absolutely. And, and, and stop putting so much on them. Don't put that right. Because as as, even as adults, and we and I talk about this on all my shows, we have to just stop, look, and listen. Yes. And sometimes it doesn't even take a lot of conversation. Some of the, I'll say some of the toughest dudes on the street, they just want to hug. They just want somebody to dap them up. They just want somebody to just stand in. And sometimes just look at them like they're crazy. Absolutely. When people go wrong, you are, you are afraid to approach someone that's doing bad because you're afraid of the repercussions. Absolutely. You said something earlier, Ozzy. Game recognized game. Game recognized. You know, so again, if you come with that phony stuff, you know, kids going to see right through you. Right through it. You got to build relationships with young people. So you, one, let them know that 
you're going to be held accountable for whatever you do. I'm cool with you. You my man. You my girl. Whatever. And I tell I tell my students that now. You know. Oh, you my man. You my man. Yeah, but I'm still going. I'm still going to box you over the head because number one, I want you to be better. I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be better than me. I don't want you to be. I don't want you to be the president. I want you to be the superintendent. I don't want you know of schools. I don't want you to be you know just 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 somebody who's doing well and comfortable. I want you to be that CEO that 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 that's writing checks and and, and uh, giving young people homes and things like. I mean, I, I want I want you to be the owner. <laughs> I, I I tell people, and that's funny you say that because I, I live by that slogan. Everyone I come into contact with, I tell them I want them to be better than me. Because if I ever stop, I want to have confidence in the people that I'm making better than me to continue Absolutely. my legacy. Absolutely. And that's what people are selfish. People want to want all the accolades themselves. No. And at some point, you're going to stop. So who's going to carry that on if you're not training people up to Absolutely. carry that on? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I've had success in schools. And like I said, I talk about Don Bosco. And, you know, I've had success, but it wasn't about me. You know, it's not about me. It's the team did the work. I just happened to be I just happened to be the one at the at, at the seat and not even there I wasn't at the top. I was I was the principal who put people in place and empowered them to do their jobs. And that's what we're doing at Carroll. You know, we're putting people in place to empower them to do their jobs. It's a great opportunity for young people in in Maryland, DC, Virginia who want a great education and know that their young person is going to be held accountable. It's not about me. Amen. So when you keep, you know, when parents are upset, when things happen, things happen. Life happens. Guess what? Don't call me fussing. <laughs> call your kid because nine times out of ten, it's their fault. Their fault. So yeah. if you're squeezing from your end, we're squeezing from our end, you have a product. And now that kid has nowhere to go mm-hmm. other than to be accountable, other than to do the right thing. And we move forward. But when mm-hmm. you as a parent want to bring everything on the schools, you want to blame the teachers. You want to blame the, the administrators. You want to blame them. But you're not looking in the mirror talking about what can I do to help. Lazy parenting. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we're about to, we, I'm going to set it up. So, <laughs> Brother Larry, he wasn't expecting this, but I'm, I'm going to put him on the spot. Okay. Nah. So, we're going to go from, I, I truly believe there are three things that life represent. Life, rep, well, first of all, life represents life. It represents respect. Okay. And it represents God. Absolutely. If people was to post those three things up at their door before they walk out the door or before their kids walk out the door, you're going to think about one of those three things as you go into your day. Absolutely. What we're not doing is we're not encouraging our kids to have a good thought when they leave the households. Absolutely. The kids are leaving the households with whatever thoughts they want to have. So by the time they step out into the real world, they're already confused because they don't have any structure to start when they walk outside the house. Absolutely. And 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 that makes sense. And and I, I live by that with my daughter. I drop my daughter off at school and every morning I say to her before she gets her car, do your best, be your best, don't make any mistakes, have a great day. Outstanding. Yeah, and she looks at me, and she that. looks at me like, "Okay, daddy," right. and, and it's okay. It's okay. I'm okay with that. But again, life respecting God. I mean, first of all, let me let me let me flip it for you. God respect and life. Amen. You know, because we, you know, God has to be first in everything we do. Amen. And again, I didn't always talk like that. Not you know, when, when when people see <laughs> see me and, and I say things like that, they're oh man, you oh you didn't change. Right. No, it's not that I changed; it's that I've grown. You're growing and you woke up. And and, and 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 life, you have to. I mean, if we're not looking at what's next, if we're always thinking about or staying, if I if I, I want to stay in C plus, no, I don't want to stay in C plus. I want to rise above it. That's why you know when all these kids idolize these rappers, and I don't even want to talk about Kanye and all that other nonsense because again, you idolizing these folks, you're idolizing them. And they're living in mansions, and you living in a hut on, for, for all conversation and, and purposes. You're furnishing the hut. <laughs> exactly. So we, we're going to tackle the first one: the expectations of scholars. Mm-hmm. And I'm a, I'm going to give it. I'm going to give my my perception of it from a mentor and a coach. Okay. Then I want you to bring it home from an administrator and a principal and a leader of our young people. Absolutely. So a lot, I, I, I do a lot of mentoring. I do a, I visit a lot of homes. I talk to a lot of kids. And, you know, moms and dads always say, well, you know, with Coach Archie, you know, I just don't know what she's doing. I just don't know what he's doing. So I often, often ask, do you sit down and have daily conversations? 
We can get on the phone and talk to our girlfriends. We right. can talk to our mans and them. We can right, watch our right, favorite right. TV shows. Absolutely. That's valuable time that we're wasting on something that's not important. So we want to have an uproar when our kids do something bad. <laughs> but guess what? The kids are watching you take time away from them when they need you the most. A lot of parents don't know their kids. Right. That's right. another aspect of it. But the expectation of a scholar, to me, from coach to player, is live your best life now <laughs> so you don't have to try to worry about living it later. Right. And right. your best life, me, is actually setting yourself up to have a normal life. Our kids are not having normal lives anymore because they're not setting themselves up. Right. And that's on the parents. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I mean, you know, it's funny that you say living your best life that's song every time you know that song best like my daughter <laughs> sings it and she 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 does it in this little funny voice and it is it is the most funny thing but every time I hear that song I love to see her do that because she drops all facades she drops the mirror the mask there we go. and she's just herself yep. and that makes me feel good you know as a parent to know that my kid you know is out here living living her best life because she's not afraid of that. So from the administrator standpoint, you know, I need parents to 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 help young help their young uh, people understand what their best life is. And it's not necessarily what they think it is. Amen. Because again, as a parent, you know, I want my kids, you know, if I'm a baseball player, I wanted all my kids to play baseball, this, that, and the other. One plays softball, one kind of played softball, the other one plays soccer. Right. Okay. I never pushed it. I never stressed it. I wanted them to always come to me and tell me what they want. So when we're trying to have our kids be their best life, you have to know your kid. Mm -hmm. You got to talk to them. Talk to them. You got to say, "Hey, what's going on?" As an administrator, you know, you got to know your kid. If your kid is not coming home doing their homework, washing the dishes, making their bed, this, that, and the other, then why are you expecting them to come to school doing their homework? And when the teacher calls you, you upset. Well, they're not doing the stuff at home. So that's what. Let's. Push from your side, I push from my side, from the administrative standpoint, and then you got to make sure that we're being honest with one another. Yes. And, 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 and as much as I love all of my babies, they're no angels. No, no. And so if I get a call, I'm going to question because if it's out of character, but I put nothing past them. Right. You know, and again, they have cell phones, this, that, and the other. As an administrator, check your kid's cell phone. Right. I tell my kid, I'll grab it in a minute. It's mine. It's your cell phone. Kids do not. That whole privacy thing with the journals, yeah, with the phones, oh, and all that. That's why we have all these crimes out here. All these yes. pedophiles and these, yes. these luring these kids into different things. Because parents, for, for whatever reason, I'm going to use the word afraid. Mm. They are mm. afraid to challenge their kids. And guess what? Your kids are always sizing you up. Oh, absolutely. Especially when it comes to academics. So guess what parents always say? Well, I don't know. I, I've been out of school for 35 years. I don't know. Right. So guess what? Your child is going to play on that. Absolutely. So when mom, if you don't know, why, you, am, I why, am, I, why am I supposed to know? Why, and why am I learning this if you're not even utilizing it? You know, you flip that though, Haji, because again, when we Come grew on, up, man. when we grew up, <laughs> when we grew up, and, and 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 you didn't know something like if you didn't know a definition of a word, my mom's famous thing was. Look it Look up. Look it up. In the dictionary. The Funk and Wagner dictionary. <laughs> Whatever, yeah, Britannica, encyclopedias. Yes, sir. And I did some good book reports with those, with those yeah, encyclopedias. On, but anyway. Before plagiarism. <laughs> Before they had a way to find out. On, <laughs> but anyway, no, it's, 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 we got to make sure that we're, we're, you know, they don't know something from, from a parent standpoint or a kid standpoint, but they got Google. And I always say, look it up. Together. Look it up. I mean, it's the easiest thing, and it's right there for you. So, again, instead of when you say, I don't know, and, and then your first go-to is, well, I'm going to tell you, then you take away that, that investigative nature. Right. You take away that curiosity, and, and that's killing kids in school because mm -hmm. what is a research paper? You go on Google, and that's it. You that's find it. everything, and you cite Google. No, I mean, find the books. Find the things. And they're not doing that, and 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 we're not forcing our parents to do that because they want to push back. Well, he can't do it. Mm. Well, why can't he do it? Mm. Why can't he do it? And, and I'm gonna say something, and I, I know people may cringe a little bit, but you know, because my kid is ADHD. I, man, don't do it. I, I what? Man, you can debate that all day long. I, and I'm not gonna. I mean, my no, thing no, is I'm, not. I'm yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, we because. 
and, and again, you know, and Nikki, again, Nikki, I'm about to go, Nikki. Hey, because <laughs> that is, man, that has become the go-to excuse, and and people can blow my phones up. They can send me all types of emails. Absolutely, that becomes the go-to because now you got kids that don't even have it, but they hear the conversation. Absolutely. So now they're giving themselves a pass to Absolutely. act like they got it. Absolutely. And again, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. And of course it does. Know it exists, so we, what was know? we calling it when we was growing up? It, 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 we wasn't oh, calling it that. No, nah, it wasn't called that. It was man. called deal with it. it. You know what I'm saying? Deal with it. You know, on, man. Your, mother, your mother said go in there and do your homework, and then you better not come out there until it was right, right however long it took. So, I mean, we got to, from the administrator standpoint, we got to make sure that, one, if children are truly going through this, you know, uh, uh, illness, that we get them the help that get they the need, help, get you know, but don't tell me self-diagnosis that, 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 that this is what's going on. So if this is what's going on, then you know that you got to put things in place to support your kid other than dropping them off at school and then bringing them home. Baby you got to get, you, exactly. You got to get the tutors. You got to get, you know, you got the kid on medicine. And again, that whole process if they need it, they need it, and you have to follow through, and you have to do everything you need to support that kid. However, if you just saying it because you're lazy as a parent and looking for an excuse, then I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. And they're never going to admit to it, but at the end of the day, <laughs> that's what it is. Once again, I always say they're saying it in a lot of cases because they're trying to hide their shortcomings. Right, right. They're, they're busy doing them, and then they take care of their kids second. Yeah. And, and and I'm blessed, you know, to 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 be in a demanding job that that I have the support of my family and things to to be able to do that. But my kids want for nothing, and 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 both my wife and I, you know, my wife's a principal, you know, Doctor Savoy over there at Yorktown Elementary, Woo-hoo! you know, uh, she's a principal. I am a president, and and our kids are, uh, are on their own. Pretty much, uh. no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no we, y'all going we, through. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we have support, and and that's what it takes, you know. I, yeah. I know people hate the expression "it takes a village" or this, that, and other, but it does. It does to some to some to some extent because again, where is it that as you are as a, as a mentor, when can you step in to be a support, not a crutch, not a replacement, right. but a support. a support? And that's what some people you know look at schools as you know. You are the, you are the parent now. Take care. I hear my parents say, "Well, yeah, they your no, they're not mine. I got enough. I don't need it. You got enough." We're here to support you and what you're doing. And have have dialogue. And that's another thing, too. And this is the most talked about situation in America. People that don't attend PTA meetings. Mm. Mm. So you can go, man, <laughs> Nikki, I'm about, to, I'm about to go in. We can go to all types of white and black parties, pink and mm. purple parties. Uh-oh. Um, we got to stand in line to get the brand new tennis shoes uh, and the cold. But you are asked to go to a PTA meeting that will probably last you an hour, if that, yeah. to actually be a part of what's going on in the school. Absolutely. So now we, we've, we've kind of shifted into the requirements of the, the parents and the guardians. Your requirement as a parent and a guardian is to be involved. Absolutely. Not when something is wrong. <laughs> you know, but they say don't be a part of the problem. But be but be the part of the solution. Absolutely. Now it you know it, it it's weird because you know I hate when parents you know again they they, they want to complain you know you'll be the mm-hmm. first to, to 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 send an email or uh, you know raise 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 all kinds of cane in the stands and right. you know this that and the other because we you know we want this we want that we don't have this we don't have that but as I say what are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing? What because you do? it, it, because again, you, you once again, if you want things, we I, I don't have a magic wand. And being in a Catholic school, I, I you know I rely on donors, I rely on, rely on benefactors, but I also rely on parents paying tuition. Let's start there. Are you doing your part? Mm. Are you doing your part to make sure that I don't have to go to my teachers and say I can't pay you this week? Right. And you know what you signed up for prior to this whole exactly. Thing. So so fast forward to we want to see this, we want to see that. Well. What are you going to do to support me? I'm not asking you to do it, right. but what are you willing to do? And a lot of parents, oh, I'm busy. I had a parent tell me, oh, I can't meet with you because I got to go to work. You got to go to work. What? What's more important? Okay, so I'm going to stop. What are you doing, church? Stop right there. <laughs> I say it on all my shows, and I tell people my show is a repetitive show because it's not for entertainment purposes. It's about giving solutions. Absolutely. The average job you get 
two weeks of vacation. <laughs> Come on. Nah, what, why am I going to use that, though? Oh, I just say I go to the school. God. Nah, man. It nah, kills me, man. But why? But why am I gonna use that? Because now I can't go. To, now I can't go to to Miami Takeover. Right. Because because uh, uh, I had to go. Uh, 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 wait a minute, y'all. I got. Uh, 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 I'm not using my leave. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm doing some six months from now. <laughs> but you but you but you need to be in your child's school Absolutely. today. Absolutely. But guess who you're gonna send? You're gonna send somebody else. Yep. That's not the decision maker no. for that kid. You're gonna send send grandma. You're gonna send uh, auntie or cousin or this that and the other, and then you're upset because they didn't say what you wanted them to say. At the end of the day, you need to be parents. Parents need to be parents. And what does that mean? It means that you have to be accountable for the actions of your young person. Period. Because we all know right from wrong. We all know what disrespect is. Absolutely. We all know how our kids are. Oh, that's just how she is. She is. No, that's just how no, no, is. no, no, no. Not, not in this day and age. Because it, how can you, how can when, a, you know, in a case scenario where a, a teacher or, or, or a dean or somebody calls you and say, your kid was disrespectful, right. your first go to it, not my child, right. last night the kid just cussed you out. Right. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> I, I need to get a light. I'm going to get a light here whenever something <laughs> So, since you're here, <laughs> why is it that a young man or a young lady can get cussed out during a sporting event, mm -hmm. but if an administrator in a school that deals with 10 times more cusses a kid out in school, there is a lawsuit? You know, take your time. Take your time. I'm, I'm gonna take, take my time. Yeah, my, my, my wife is cringing because she know what my response is getting ready to be, <laughs> and, and 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 I'm gonna have to tell you, and I and I, I I'm apologize now, but I'm not gonna apologize because I believe that you know as an administrator, I'm gonna treat you like the world's gonna treat you, but I'm gonna do it with love. Amen. So you know, I, I, I'm I'm not gonna tell you that I'm not gonna tell you tell you a few 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 choice words if you're doing things that you ought not do because. Amen. In my heart of hearts, I'm, I'm here for you. Yeah. So I'm not going to pull back, and I'm not afraid. Go go ahead and sue me. I mean, then what? Then what's your alternative? Somebody that doesn't care about you? Right. I'm doing this because this is what I do. Right. This is where my passion is. So I can't sit back and say that I'm not going to be that aggressive administrator. I'm not going to be that, that administrator to get in your kid's face and tell them that you're going to do this right. because this is what's required and this is what's needed. And I'm sorry. I, 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 well, I'm not sorry, but, but I, we were, I, I, I... And that's how we were brought up, <laughs> though. We were, we were brought... And that's another thing. Once again, we're finding excuses on, on how to not raise our kids now, how our forefathers as parents or the people yeah. we looked up to raised us. And they're talking about laws, well, you can't do it now because... because Stop with the because because right now you're once again you're finding excuses to be lazy. Absolutely, and then you want to jump in when it's too late. Yeah, you can't, you know, because again in schools, you know, if, if if I only have a certain amount of time with you and I only have a certain amount of amount of energy and efforts that I can put towards you, because again you're constantly cranking them out. You know, mm -hmm. your seniors, then you go back to your freshmen and you grow with them and you're mm -hmm. coming back. So I usually tell my my juniors and seniors, look, man, you had two years with me. Now I need you to stand and fly. But I'm not afraid to tell you what you need to do. What do you say to the parents who the kid is always late and then the mom or dad had the audacity to say, well, well, you know how the metro system is. <clears throat> you know, it wasn't his fault. <clears throat> I, I, I kindly say <laughs> this is might not be the school for you. And I know that that's easy to say in a, in, in a private setting, but I feel for my public school educators who can't say that. But we got kids like that. Truth be told, Larry, that's walking yeah. 10 blocks yeah. from their house yeah. and they ain't getting to school on time. Absolutely. absolutely. But then once again, but their parents is giving them an excuse. Excuse. So if I got an excuse, if you're not holding me accountable, then why does it matter? Look, my daughter knows 645, she better be ready. If I'm not ready, don't, don't worry about it, which right. I'm never ready. Sorry, right. Kyla. But if I'm not ready, that's not that's not the issue. Your job is to be ready at 645. I had a... I had, <laughs> I, man... That's why I love radio shows. <laughs> so there was a young man that I mentored um, by the name of Nashi Bridgman. I'm going to say his name because a lot of people know him. Um, very, you know, good kid, play football. So I used to pick him up and um, I think take him to school. Yeah, I used to drop him off at school. Him and my son was best friends. Okay. So it got to the point where I would pick him up and I found myself waiting. Mm. And he ain't my child. We, mm. we giving him a ride. So mm. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so one day I said, I said, I told my son, I said, Jordan, if he ain't ready, time to go. We gone. 
<laughs> sure enough, I pulled the car off, mm -hmm. and that particular move gave me the ammunition to say, hey, when you're on somebody else's time, then you got to be ready. You got to be ready. And, and in the beginning, the mom didn't really get it. She was like, how dare Coach Archie leave my child? Mm. Well, Coach Archie's been taking care of everybody's child for right. years and years and years, and then a light bulb went off of my head. Absolutely. I have to stop being a crutch. Yes. And being the reason why our young people fail. Uh, and, and also, too, is that they have to get that. I mean, we can only carry them but so far. Right. A as mentors, as administrators, as parents, we can only get them to a certain point. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember getting my daughter to a certain point saying, you know what, all right, you're on your own, Slim. Good luck. I'm here if you need me. But I'm not going to be running. You can take the Metro. You old enough. I'm not going to be running. Go get your license. Because we you know what? We didn't have that. Yes. <laughs> I, I went to Carol. I came from Southeast Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Totally, the totally opposite side of where Archbishop Carroll was located. Right. I caught the A8, the A6, <laughs> dropped off at LaFont Plaza, had to transfer to Metro Center, then I had to catch the H8 to get to Carroll. I could not tell my mom or dad I was late for school. Right, right, right. And see, my thing is, is that, you know, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and say, you know, even as the attendance officer, I was late to work. But, you know, again, these are things that I learned throughout the years. And so I, I, I don't want anybody to say or, or, or think, oh, he think he, you know, he better. No, nah, nah, nah. I trust me. I don't know how in the world I'm sitting here. Right. You know, somebody asked me, what's the biggest shock? Uh, what's the busy, big, biggest shock of being the president or what I've learned? And I said, the fact that I am the president, that's amazing that's because amazing. I was told that I wasn't supposed to be here. So on, when, when you when you have people that hold you accountable and not make excuses for you, you're going to be okay. It's, it's going to hurt. You know, I had a parent that, that, that I, I loved dearly and I had to tell her, your kid is making conscious decisions to, to do stupid things. Right. Guess what? Let them fall. Let them fall. Let them fall. We, we came up, and that's, wow. Like I said, I, I, love, I love radio because it gives us a chance, like you said, to have dialogue. If you don't learn anything from this show today, I definitely want people to take away with this that you have to hold not only your child accountable, but you have to be accountable yourself. Absolutely. When I tell when I when I do mentoring sessions, I always tell the moms and dads every Monday or Sunday, whichever day it is, carve out in half an hour of time to find out how your child's past week was right. and what is his his or her expectations for the week to come. Right. So now what you're doing is you're actually starting to program their minds to think about things that make sense. Right, right. And a lot of parents are not doing that. Well, you know, you know, and, and we, we, you know, my family, we get away from the Sunday dinners, I mean, the weekly dinners. But, you know, what I try to do is, because my life is busy, and this is for, this is get the excuse out of people's mouth why I'm, I'm too busy. Uh -huh. You got to find time. You got to find time. So whether it's just, you know, hey, when they sitting down playing on the computer, you sit down and talk on them, jump on their head, and, you know, mm -hmm. laugh and tickle, play around and talk a little bit, then that's what you do. Mm -hmm. When you're riding with your kid in the car, instead of allowing them to sit and play with their phones or, or, or headphones, you, you say, hey, well, how was your day? Let's talk right. about it, you know. Right. Um, you find ways to, to be creative about it. Mm -hmm. and, and, again, I wish that I could sit here and say that, you know, every Sunday we sit down and we have dinner or we during the week. No, we don't because, you know, we're going in so many different directions. But, but it that, is your thought process. It, it is a part of what you do. Right. So, again, it looks different for so many different people, but it has to be a priority. You have to talk to you have to talk to your kids. They have to talk to you. They got to know that you care. And everything we do in life, there's communication. And it's funny. It's it's very clicheish when adults often say in relationships, you know, our communication is off. Well, if your communication is off in your relationship, guess who you're depriving? You're depriving your kids as well. Absolutely. So at some point, we have to stop saying what's off, and we have to implement. It being better. Absolutely. And we also got to strengthen what is off or everything doesn't look the same. And, and that's the that's the piece that people don't understand. You know, we're, we're looking at leave it to beaver models. We're looking at, you know, those type of models. But what about the models where you just kind of just hang out? 
Yeah, just yeah. kind of kick it. Yeah. Just kind of say, hey, tell me what you're thinking. You know, why'd you wear that? Hey, let's have a Jones session. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, let's let's sit yeah. around and just break bread and talk trash. You know, I mean, yeah. talk like. And sometimes, and I tell these the families when they kids, sometimes if you just sit beside your child, turn the TV off, put your phone and their phone side by side, and say, hey, look, we don't need none of this. Right. All we need is each other right now. Absolutely. I have something going on in my life. And you're my child. Can I please share with you what's going on in my life? Absolutely, absolutely. And and again, I, that's difficult for me um, as a parent because, again, I'm one of those people that I like to process and figure things out without support of others. Uh -huh. And uh, that gives me uh, drama sometimes. But uh, at the end of the day... I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Just let me figure it out. Right. You know. Hey, and, whoa. <laughs> okay. Let's figure it out. <laughs> that was a shameless plug. I'm sorry. Uh, the Archie Bridge, little show. You know. What I'm just, but no, no. We gotta figure it out because I gotta figure it out in my head before I can start spilling it to you because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I've thought this through properly before I start talking to you. I wanna. I wanna make sure that. It clicks to me because if we sitting here chopping it up, it doesn't make sense. Right. I'm going to say one thing and then tomorrow I'll call you, hey, Archie, can I come back on next week? I thought about this and I really don't agree with this. Right. I'm very reflective. But you got to make sure that you know who you are as a person before you try to communicate with your kid. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure that, I mean, I do things, my kids think I'm crazy, which... You know, I probably am. Yeah, we Scorpios. Man. <laughs> exactly. I had my Scorpio brother. But it's 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 one of those things where, you know, I will walk down the street, sing a song, break out in the dance because it just feels good to me. And my kids will look at me like, what is wrong with you? That is me. And, and then they're friends. And, you know, I was driving with, you know, driving and uh, I'm dancing, I'm singing. And uh, they looking like, are you embarrassing? My daughter said, no, nah, that's just my dad. That's just my dad, you know. Uh, when, my, when my daughter went to Carol and I was in the hallway fussing a kid out, everybody's coming, oh, you see your dad, you see it. She's just like, yeah, that's who he is. I mean, he's not pretending. So if you're not comfortable with who you are, you cannot translate that to anybody else. And you got to be uh, you got to be OK with who you are to communicate that to your kid. The, the topic of the show and yeah, we've we've. And I'll, I always tell people, um, I don't have this show to entertain. I definitely have this show to teach and have people to retain. Um, the topic was, what's the expectations of our scholars and what's the requirements of our parents and guardians? These should be the questions or the dialogue that people should have in their household. Yes. You know, the young man or the young lady should know what their expect expectations are. Absolutely. From the mom, the administrators, and the teachers. A lot of people want to go to schools, and want. And it's another thing I don't like to learn, is when when a kid say, my teacher don't like me. Oh, man. Oh, man. And then guess what? They run home and tell the mom and dad that. And they, they jump on Man, they, they mm, jump on because they we jump all Because we all want to fight. Absolutely. They we want to love, want to fight. No, nah, but they want to... They want, they, what it is, they want to pass the blame as to why their kid's not being successful. They want to pass the buck because, again, I, 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 would, be, I would be lying if I sat here and said that every teacher is for every kid. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, we know that. But yeah. that's my job. Right. Let me figure out the right. ones that aren't for you. But let's not make that your go-to because at the end of the day, you still got to do that work. At the end of the day, you still got to you still gotta turn into work. And that person ain't got to like you. Right. You just got to be in and, and do what you're supposed to do so you can be successful. I tell students all the time, so what? They don't like you. Did you do your work? Did you do your work? Did you do your work? The same thing at work. Yeah. When, people, when my boss don't like me. So? If you go to work and do your job, I don't care if my boss don't like me. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. I'm doing what's required. We have to teach our kids and even our even in our relationships, we have to do what's required. If Absolutely. you don't know what's required, then ask. Absolutely. And once they tell your requirements, jot it down. Yes. So now you're holding the other person accountable right. for what they just told you. Absolutely. And, and then you also got to also you got to help young people also understand, okay, let's play this out. And I've done this. Let's play this out. The teacher doesn't like you. Now, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You just going to walk around mad? You just going to let somebody else fight your own fight? Or are you going to figure out how to do this? Right. Let me give you some tools. Send a teacher an email. I was very disappointed about this. And CC your parent and CC me. Mm -hmm. Or CC the principal. Or CC somebody, an administrator. Because mm -hmm. now you're empowering that young person to deal with that head on. Right. Not run and tell mom. Right. You know, you got to learn how to maneuver. Because 
This world out here don't care about all that. They don't care. Shameless plug, vote, 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 vote. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget no, to vote. That's, that's good. So, <laughs> I'm glad you, and that's funny, man, because that's how I was supposed to start my show off, and I, I'm I'm guilty for that. I never jot down because I like to go from the heart. But thank you for bringing that up. Once again, this is another teachable moment. If you know how this world is and what makes this world tick, absolutely, and we know the voting is like the number one proponent or component of what makes this world Absolutely. go. It don't take you but a hot second to round up, what's the vote, 18? 18. 18. 18. Wow. Yeah. If you can grab 18 kids and take them roller skating yeah. or take them to the go-kart go, go, the go -kart track, right. why can't you get 10 or 8 to 10 kids and take them to the voting polls? Absolutely. Because but it does make a difference. It, it does make a difference, but the reason why I said it at that moment is because we're empowering our young people, we're empowering our society to to f advocate for themselves. If you don't like what's going on, you got to do something about, something it. about it. You got to do something about it. So so I, and that's why I popped in my head at that moment because my job is to help 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds and beyond mm -hmm. to advocate for themselves. Fight for what's right. Mm -hmm. Everybody in this world is not going to like you. Everybody in this world is not going to say, Hey, you know, you're a nice kid, this, that, and the other. You know, kind of, uh, the, the, quite the contrary. They're going to say the opposite. Right. You know, oh, he's soft, or he did this, or he did. Mm -hmm. So voting empowers people. Advocating for yourself empowers you. So when you say that teacher doesn't like you or this, that, and the other, how many times did we say our parents didn't like us? Oh, wow. You know, and, and the response is, I don't got to like you. I love you, though. Right. So... Anyway, yeah, that was that. That that's, vote that's, came that's, up. That's, the, vote, the vote thing is so important, man. Because, and another thing too, and I say this all the time: we need to grab our our whether it be young kids, teenagers, or whatever. We need to have conversations with them about what's going on in the world, so they don't get blindsided. Absolutely, uh, a lot of people are downplaying from the shootings to what the president is doing to what just, you name it, it's a gamut of things that are going on in society that people are not having dialogue about. Absolutely. And and that can actually directly tie into something else that's going on in the household. Yes. So if, if they see it on a big picture, it'll make them rethink what they're doing in their household. Absolutely. But then when you, when you, when you, when you listen to what's going on, and I tell people all the time, look at the news, you know, listen. Uh, I, I love in the morning. I listen to the Joe Madison show uh, okay. on XM. The black, and, and the black, yeah, the black eagle. Black yeah, don't black get that wrong, man. He might call you up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so, so you know, my daughter when we first started the school year, you know, I would make her. I listen to it in the morning, and 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 she was tuning it out at first. But now we laughing, we joking, we talking about issues. She's questioning, you know, but well, what what is that, Daddy? Why why are they saying that? Well. But because she needs to be informed, you know, as I tell my students, if you're not looking at the news, gentlemen, mm -hmm. to see what's going on with our young ladies mm -hmm. and young ladies, you're not looking at it to see how you're being treated, how you're being portrayed. We have a problem. Yeah. If we don't educate ourselves about what's happening and, and making sure that we hold our young people accountable for what's happening. You know, I get upset when I, I, I go to teachers and I say, are you making them look at the news? Are you, you know, I remember having to bring the Washington Post or bring in an article or something yeah. that we had to bring in to, to bring make in. sure yeah. that we're tuned into the news. Now, of course, what most of us bought in the sports page, yeah. but they didn't because care. They didn't care. They wanted something. They, they wanted something, something so you could read it, so you can know what's going on and et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, a lot of teachers, a lot of educators are not holding that accountable, holding holding students accountable, kids accountable, and parents are not making them sit down and watch what's going on in the world. And it's not all bad. Right. It's not all bad. I mean, the news highlights the negative, but what about the good stories out there? What about the things that you feel empowered to 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 want to change, to right. want to be a change agent? Use the negative for fuel, but look at the positive. The positive. I mean, love there, all. There are, there are a lot of positive out here. Absolutely. And, uh, and I'm not one to, I never played the race car because there are so many. That's another thing, too. You know, we once again, we're finding or giving our kids excuses to combat against something that they may need down the road. Absolutely. So we need, there should be a lot of breaking down going on yes. in, in our households. Yes. So there can be some clarity. And making sure that we know how to. Uh, uh, as I say, you know, code switch. I mean, and, and that's something that, you know, I know a lot of people don't always agree with, but 
you got to know how to play the game. Come on, man. You got to know how to play the game. There's there, there's a game out here, and if you haven't figured it out, it's you know. Stop going against the grain. You yes. got to play the game and stop going against the grain. And that's, once again, the conversation that you and I are having right now, mm -hmm. that should be the conversations that people should be having in their households. That should be the kind of conversation guys should be having at the barbershop. Absolutely. The ladies in the salon. Absolutely. The people in the nail places. Yes. We have so much downtime that we're wasting. Yes. You feel me? That's I like, do. That's no. like having a whole plate of food and you just throw it away. You just throw it away. And before the plate was made, you know you weren't going to eat all that. Absolutely. But yet, you rather waste food just like you're wasting time. Absolutely. And you're seeing people in front of you that are failing because you're not stepping up to the plate just to give them a several words that can probably change their lives. And it doesn't matter. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what color. It doesn't matter no, what religion. Doesn't matter. Everybody, because, everybody. because again, you know, there are people out there that don't like you who look like you. So Come why on, are you going to worry about somebody who don't like you because they, 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 they're another race? My haters. Hey, there's a lot of them out there, you know. It's and it's it's. What what is Archie going to do now? What is Archie <laughs> going to do now? They don't stop and think that Archie are doing things to better other people. Absolutely, because again, they're selfish. Right. It's, it's because people are selfish. And see, when I tell people, I, I look, I when I'm at work, it's oh about God. these kids. When I'm at home, it's about my family. There's right. no in between. I, I I'm it. not. I don't have a hidden agenda. You know what I mean? Oh. I don't have a hidden agenda. I want my students, I want my school to be the best. Period. We, I'm going <laughs> to throw this one in there too, man. And maybe you can help me. Okay. Why does society accept these young men with their pants hanging off their buttocks, oh, man? Oh, man. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. You know what? You know what? They can say this. They said the same thing for us when we were wearing the big baggy jeans and then, you know, the hammer pants and this, that, and the other. It's their thing. I don't like it. Uh, and, and again, what I will say is this. There's a time and a place. There's a time and a place. But my, my and, and young, the Savoy ladies. <laughs> I got Savoy ladies in front of me. And it's funny because your natural instinct is to look. Yes. Even a man, if a, if 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 I see a man walking out of the street, whether I want to look at his behind or not, agree. I'm looking because his pants is down. Why would you want another man looking in that area of your body? I get it, Archie. I get it. I get it, man. But again, I'm not. I don't want to sit here like, oh man, you know, it's bad or it's that and the other. But I tell you one thing that gets on my nerves. What's that? When 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 you know, same thing. Why do they put writing? On the bottoms of young ladies' pants. Oh, I, that's, I haven't seen that. No. Oh, come on, Archie. The pink, love pink. You got pink uh, on your butt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How is that okay? That ain't okay. Thank you. Yeah, but why is that show. okay? You know, oh, why is that oh, okay? Man. You know, yeah, we got the guys who pull their pants down. But and then looking well, right at it. You're looking at right. hey. So, again, if that's, we're going to say about a, the guys, a, we got to talk about the girls. Hey, Nikki, that's a drop of mic. Man, Nikki, document, I drop the mic. I never, that's. Wow. I mean, you know, again, that's, it's that's, it's, it's not to take away from, it's not to take away from, yes, yeah. you know, young men need to pull their pants up. I mean, I'll, I'll be the first to say that, but also there's a time and a place, you know. And that, we, we and wanna, that, yeah. but, that, but now that brings us back to even the whole topic of the show. What's the, what's the expectations of our scholars and what's the requirements of our parents and guardians? Expectations is you need to live your life so that your life can be successful. Yes. The requirements of our parents and guardians is to protect our young folks while they are in the process of learning. Absolutely. And if we, if if both parties do that, then we'll all be in a better situation. We will. Just that alone. Man. Yeah. But we also got to talk about this, Archie. We got to talk about our kids about education. We got to talk about. Uh, we got to talk about the fact that they need. That is the great equalizer. Education. Mm -hmm. We got to prepare our young people for college, not to say that they have to go, not to say that, you know, there's not money in, in the trade, but you have to be prepared uh, to, to, to do that. Let's take this call real quick. Okay, cool. Who, who we got a call on the line? Call you on the line? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Got you. Yes, sir. Who am I talking with? Uh, this, uh, this, this here, uh, I, I, just, I just turned on the, the radio. Just now, and I'm hearing a brother, the way that the brother, your guest, is handling the situation, telling us that there is a time and a place. I, I used to sag. I, 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 I'm against it. 
My man. Okay, so, yes, sir. Uh, but no, no, no. But 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 I just I just called to say that, uh, you know, the brother he, he impresses me, man. And uh, thank, thank you, man. Thank, thank you. Thank awesome. You. Thank right. you, sir. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chad. My man. All right. My man. All right. There you go. Like I said, hey. <laughs> we just talked about this, man. I got I actually got a radio show. Hey, man. And and we reaching so many people, man. And that's a valid point. Like he said, he used to say it. But when you put things, and that's another thing. Everything that's done needs to be broken down instead of frowned upon. Pull somebody to the side and say, hey, this looks like this, and this may prevent you from getting this. Right. And then you have to make a choice whether you want to continue or not. Yeah. You know, if you show up to a job interview sagging, Please know that it, it, you're gonna be dragging. You go, you ain't gonna be, you ain't gonna be paid. And so, <laughs> if you're not willing to do that, then you got to understand. No yeah. different than the way you, the way you dress, the way you groom yourself. All of that is important. Right. You know, when you when you try to get somewhere or do something, and not to take away from the youth and the, the and, and and being free and all the other stuff. I get that, but again, time okay. and a place for everything. All right, hey. My man, hey, <laughs> I knew God put it on my heart to ask you to come on my show, man, because I knew, I know that you're a phenomenal brother. Like I said, I saw you in the in the Don Bosco. I saw you doing what you do there. Thank you. And sir. then when they told me that you was coming to Carol, they was like, hey, man, you, heard, you know Larry, you know Larry. I was like, yeah, I know him. I've seen his work. Thank you. And for you guys to have him in this building, that is really going to put us on the map, man. Yeah, well, yeah. I, well, it's not about me. And I say that it's about the team that we're building and the opportunities yeah. for young people. So, uh, if you're looking for a good home, good high school, Archbishop Carroll High Carole, School. Go Lions, go green lines, and go. Green and go. All right. Hey, Nick, I got one minute. I'm number one. I'm your number one radio <laughs> host. I always give a shout out to my daughter, my sister, Nikki. Nikki be on the board. She, she ain't on the wheels of steel. She on the board. <laughs> but um, I, I, once again, I want to thank God for giving me this platform. I want to thank my mom and my dad. And I want to thank people like yourself that's truly making a difference, man. And I want to thank your lovely family for joining us in the studio. Thank you. Um, hey, man. I'm Appreciate just, you. I'm excited about life, man. Appreciate you. Know. Absolutely. Absolutely. We got to be. We got to be. We, gotta, we just got to be happy. We got to talk and communicate, man. We just got to. It's going to be okay. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. It's going to be okay because we want it to be. There you go. <laughs> All right. All right. So, thank you, Ashi. Not a problem, man. WL95.9 FM, 1450 AM, WODCnews.com, where information is power. This is the Archie Bezlow Show. Let's figure it out. God bless you all. See you guys next week. Thank you. There you go. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you sure appreciate it. Hey, man, thanks again for supporting me, man. I love y'all. I love y'all. See y'all next week.